That was the scene from Israel's attack on a warehouse very close to the Russian airbase in Syria. As a result, there is growing speculation that Russia may be planning to teach Israel a bitter lesson for what is perceived as a dangerous and provocative move by the Israeli military. The airstrikes hit an area close to the Kamimim Air Base, which is Russia's key military hub in Syria. For Russia, this isn't just a local issue. It strikes at the core of their regional influence, and with Israel being a close ally of the US, it adds another layer to the geopolitical chessboard. Rumors are swirling that Russia's potential response could be far more than diplomatic. Some reports suggest that Moscow may deliver cutting-edge missile systems like the Iskandar, a short-range ballistic missile system capable of carrying both conventional and nuclear warheads as part of a retaliatory package. The Iskandar has the capability to strike targets with high precision, and its delivery would not only enhance the Syrian military's capabilities, but also send a very strong message to Israel that Russia won't stand idly by as its interests are threatened. There's also talk that Russia could bolster Syria's air defenses with more advanced systems like the S-400, which could drastically alter the airspace over Syria, making future Israeli airstrikes much more difficult to carry out. But the possibility of Moscow sending warplanes is where things get even more interesting. Russia has already stationed fighter jets at Kamimim Air Base, but if they ramp up their air presence, it could complicate things for Israel, whose air force is used to having a relatively free hand when conducting operations in Syria. A stronger Russian air presence could create situations where Russian and Israeli jets are in the same airspace, potentially leading to more dangerous encounters. So when people say Russia could teach Israel a lesson, it's not just about missiles and air defenses, it's about a show of force that would demonstrate Russia's unwillingness to allow further provocations near its military installations. As a result of this, the S-400 air defense system has become one of the most Googled topics in Iran after the Islamic nation carried out one of the most successful missile strikes on vital Israeli military bases, where satellite images show that many high-end Israeli fighter jets, including the formidable air superiority F-35, were destroyed and their hangars pummeled. The surge in interest in the S-400 in Iran is directly related to the fact that the Israeli Occupation Army's War Cabinet approved a series of strikes on Iranian facilities. Many experts suggest that, true to Israel's historically aggressive military strategies, these targets will likely include Iranian oil fields, refineries, airfields, and possibly even nuclear sites. The United States is currently trying to rein in Israel, urging it to attack Iran in a proportional manner, meaning that Israel, like Iran, should focus on targeting military installations rather than civilian infrastructure, a tactic Israel has often overlooked in its Middle Eastern conflicts. However, Given Iran's vast size and extensive military capabilities, restricting the attacks to military targets alone might not achieve the desired effects on Iranian defenses. The spotlight now turns to how Iran plans to defend itself against what many see as an inevitable Israeli assault. There is growing concern that Iran lacks comprehensive air and missile defense systems capable of adequately protecting its most crucial military bases from such an attack. In this context, the Russian-made S-400 system is viewed as a potential game-changer. While Iran does possess significant missile capabilities, its air force is considerably less advanced than that of Israel. Israel boasts one of the most sophisticated air forces in the world, with numerous F-35 fifth-generation fighter jets, highly advanced drones, and highly experienced pilots. Moreover, Israel is not alone in its military endeavors, it is backed by the United States, which has positioned multiple bases throughout the region, prepared to intervene if Israel faces existential threats. In fact, the U.S. has recently ramped up its military presence in the Middle East, deploying several thousand additional troops, along with fighter jets and other aircraft, to reinforce the protection of American forces and allied nations.
The total number of U.S. troops in the region now stands at approximately 43,000, and they are supported by a formidable naval presence, including more than a dozen warships. This move signals Washington's commitment to maintaining its strategic influence in the region while standing behind its ally, Israel, amid escalating tensions with Iran. One of the most critical recent developments was Israel's surge in airstrikes in Lebanon, where it targeted and killed prominent figures in the Lebanese resistance movement, including Hassan Nasrallah and several of his top commanders. Iran responded swiftly, firing over 180 ballistic missiles at Israeli targets, actions that many see as setting the stage for an all-out war in the Middle East. With each retaliatory strike, the stakes grow higher, and the likelihood of a broader regional conflict becomes more pronounced. In this volatile situation, Iran appears to be leaning heavily on its partnership with Russia, hoping that the S-400 air defense system will be the linchpin of its defensive strategy. The S-400 is considered one of the most advanced air defense systems globally, capable of detecting and intercepting multiple targets simultaneously, from fighter jets to ballistic missiles. The system's ability to track targets at long ranges and engage them before they pose a direct threat makes it a highly coveted asset, particularly for nations like Iran, which find themselves under the constant threat of airstrikes. Reports suggest that Russia may have already delivered the S-400 to Iran, and speculation abounds that Russian military experts are currently training Iranian personnel on the system's operation. Adding to this strategic relationship between Russia and Iran is the possible delivery of Su-34 multi-role fighter jets to Iran. While still unconfirmed if true, this would mark a significant shift in the balance of power in the region. The Su-34 is a highly capable aircraft, known for its versatility in performing both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground operations. An Iranian fleet of Su-34s would greatly enhance the country's ability to defend itself from Israeli airstrikes, potentially intercepting Israeli missiles before they could reach their intended targets. It is this growing military cooperation between Iran and Russia that has intensified the animosity many Israelis feel toward Moscow. Social media platforms have been flooded with anti-Russian sentiment from pro-Israel accounts, particularly as Russia's involvement in the Ukrainian conflict further complicates its standing on the global stage. Many in Israel view Russia's support for Iran as a direct threat to their security, fueling both political and public discontent. Russia's role as a key supplier of advanced military technology to Iran, coupled with its perceived ambivalence toward Israel's security concerns, has only deepened the rift between the two nations. The geopolitical dynamics at play here are complex and multifaceted. Russia's relationship with Iran is not just about military cooperation. It is also about Russia's broader strategy in the Middle East. By supplying Iran with advanced defense systems like the S-400 and potentially the Su-34, Russia is cementing its influence in a region that has long been dominated by U.S. and Israeli interests. For Iran, Russian support offers a much-needed counterbalance to Israeli and American military might. While Iran has developed a substantial missile arsenal, its air defenses have historically been one of its weak points. The acquisition of the S-400 could change that, providing Iran with a robust system capable of countering Israeli air superiority. However, this growing military alliance also raises concerns about the potential for a wider regional conflict. 
With Israel determined to prevent Iran from achieving military parity, particularly in terms of missile and air defense capabilities, the possibility of preemptive strikes increases. Israel has a long history of striking at what it perceives as existential threats, from the bombing of Iraq's Osirak nuclear reactor in 1981 to the more recent airstrikes on Iranian targets in Syria. Should Iran's S-400 system become fully operational, Israel may feel compelled to act before the balance of power shifts too far in Iran's favor. The United States while committed to supporting Israel, is also wary of being drawn into another protracted conflict in the Middle East. The Biden administration's approach has been one of cautious engagement, seeking to prevent a full-scale war while maintaining its alliances in the region. Washington's call for proportionality in Israel's response to Iranian provocations reflects this balancing act. However, as the situation escalates, it remains to be seen whether the U.S. can maintain this delicate balance without becoming further entangled in the conflict. The recent Israeli strikes on a warehouse near Russia's Kamemim Air Base in Syria have sparked significant concerns regarding the potential for military entanglement with Russia. While the primary target appeared to be munitions allegedly intended for the Lebanese resistance, the proximity of these strikes to Russian assets adds a new layer of complexity to an already tense situation. The fear of an escalation involving Moscow has deepened, especially as reports emerge from the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, SOHR, detailing how the strikes took place dangerously close to Russian military interests in the region. The strikes, which reportedly involved approximately 30 missiles launched in the coastal Latakia province, hit a warehouse near Jabla, raising questions about how this affects Russia's stance. Although Israel's intent was to cripple supplies believed to be headed to the Lebanese resistance, the fact that this incident occurred near Kamaimim Air Base, Russia's primary military hub in Syria, cannot be overlooked. Gamimim is not just any base, it is Russia's strategic foothold in the Mediterranean, playing a critical role since Russia began its military intervention in Syria in 2015. This base is essential for Moscow's ability to project power in the Middle East, with agreements in place ensuring long-term Russian control. Striking close to such a vital installation runs the risk of provoking a significant reaction from Moscow, especially if Russian personnel or assets had been damaged in the process. Historically, Russia has maintained a delicate balance in its relationship with Israel, often trying to manage the competing interests of maintaining its influence in Syria while not alienating Israel, a country with which it has strategic ties. However, these airstrikes challenge that balance. If Israeli strikes are seen as an affront to Russia's presence, or if they compromise Russia's military operations in the region, we could see a more assertive response from Moscow. Russian forces in Syria, including their advanced S-300 and S-400 air defense systems, have often been criticized for failing to prevent Israeli strikes. This has raised doubts about Russia's willingness to engage directly with Israeli forces, as it seems that Moscow has been keen to avoid an open conflict. Nonetheless, repeated instances of Israeli attacks close to Russian bases and assets could push Moscow to reassess its posture. In terms of retaliation, Russia's options are varied, ranging from diplomatic measures to military responses. On the diplomatic front, Moscow could apply pressure on Israel through international channels, condemning the strikes and seeking to build a coalition of support against further Israeli actions in Syria. 
Russia has significant leverage at the United Nations and within various international bodies, which could be used to isolate Israel diplomatically if it continues to carry out strikes near Russian positions. Militarily, Russia may increase its support for the Syrian government and their Iranian allies, allowing them more freedom to respond to Israeli strikes without fear of Russian restraint. Moscow could also provide more advanced air defense systems to Syria or even bolster the Syrian military's operational capabilities in ways that would directly counter Israeli air superiority. This would not necessarily mean direct Russian-Israeli clashes, but rather an indirect escalation where Syria's military capabilities are boosted under Russian guidance to a point where Israeli strikes become much more challenging. Moreover, Russia could leverage its position by allowing the Lebanese resistance and other regional groups greater latitude to act against Israeli targets, subtly shifting the military balance in the region. This would be a way for Moscow to assert itself without engaging directly with Israel, making it clear that attacks near its bases or allies in Syria come with consequences. Given Russia's extensive military infrastructure in the region, such moves could be executed relatively swiftly. On the other hand, Russia might opt for a more direct military show of force. By increasing air patrols near Israeli operational areas or actively engaging Israeli aircraft in Syrian airspace, Russia could send a clear signal to Jerusalem that future strikes close to its assets will not be tolerated. This kind of escalation could lead to dangerous confrontations, especially given that Israeli forces have shown a willingness to strike key military sites in Syria including those near Russian positions. The broader question is how this fits into Russia's overall strategy. With the war in Ukraine drawing much of Moscow's attention, the Kremlin may be reluctant to open another front, especially against a militarily advanced nation like Israel. However, Russia cannot afford to appear weak, particularly in a region where it has invested so heavily to secure its interests. Any perception that Russia is unable to protect its own assets or that Israeli strikes can continue without consequences would undermine Moscow's position as a dominant force in Syria and the Middle East. Ultimately, Israel's targeting of munitions near Russia's Khmeimim airbase is not just a tactical move in its ongoing conflict with the Lebanese resistance. It is a potentially dangerous provocation of a major global power. Whether Russia's response will be diplomatic, military, or a combination of both remains to be seen, but it is clear that Moscow will not tolerate actions that it perceives as threats to its military operations or geopolitical standing in Syria.